e-gaming bets. We accept bets on computer games online since 2011. Referral system for regular users and the first deposit bonus. Gaming devices store and the best choice of payment systems. Dota 2 and Hearthstone, Counter-Strike and StarCraft, World of Tanks and League of Legends. EGB.com. You know for sure who's going to win. G2A.com, the best video game store ever. Fast as lightning, solid as a rock, cheap as duck. <laughs> What's more, you can sell on it because it's also a marketplace. Remember G2A.com, the best video game store ever. Welcome guys, welcome Dota Pit is back and we're here with some more SEA action, more best of twos, more lovely games for you guys today. I'm Durka here in the JD Studios and I just realised I said best of two, it just rolled off the tongue and I, uh, I, I kind of feel ashamed now. It's a two game series, Signature Trust against MVP Phoenix here in the group stage. My co-caster Scant is with us as well and you've been watching plenty of Chinese He's SEA Dota time. recently. I've, uh, I've been out of the loop a little bit. What do you think about these two teams? Uh, MVP Phoenix look incredible, actually. I mean, and this is basically since their TRN, I don't think that we've seen MVP, well, either MVP looking that threatening. And in Dota Pits, just recently, since they got back from the game show league where it was kind of like half of each MVP team, MVP Phoenix have looked great. They've won their first two series in this tournament, 2-0. And I happened to cast the the most recent one, I think, where they played against Fnatic. Phoenix and they 2 0 at Fnatic extremely convincingly. They actually picked a Tiny in the first game of that series as well. Um, at that stage, they combined it with a, a QOPA. I don't know if that's going to be something they want to do here now that they put the Bristol back as well, but it is a possibility, of course, because I, I think they ran safely and Tiny with one support in that game. And they did have an aggressive dual lane, so it could, could be like West Bristol back. But yeah, for the side of Signature Trust, this is actually a team that's, I think, look very, very consistent. More consistent than most teams in the region recently, but not necessarily consistently the best. Just consistently competing at the top. They're making all the semi-finals, if not finals. But they've lost to a lot of teams recently, just as much as they've won. I think they had a big loss against TNC, actually, in the, like a 3-0 grand final recently. So definitely, this is a team that could challenge MVP, but... I gotta say, if, if this is the MVP that I saw against Fnatic, they, they're the favorites here, for sure. So, uh, one, one thing worth pointing out, since we're sort of looking at how people have done recently, 1, 2, 3 have forfeited and uh, are out of the group stage, so all of their games will be given as wins to the rest of their opponents. So, uh, 1, 2, 3 have, uh, have basically given a free win to everybody, as, as far as I know. So, that does... Oh, you know, uh, change things up a little bit. They were one of the teams I was kind of looking at in this group stage, thinking, yeah, they're top four material. They're definitely very good enough time. there. But yeah, like you said, Fnatic four wins, two draws, four losses. They're up at eight points. MVP with six points, with you know two two big wins. Like you're saying, some very very good stuff from them. But the draft so far, Wisp Tiny disrupted Bristle back. Bristle we're seeing a lot of recently. But trust, this is a team that I've. I, I've adored them for, you know, a good three three years or so. Lakels, he's been around for a long old time. They always have these quirky little drafts where they were really one of the biggest proponents of that Dragonite mid with the Blink Dagger, where they just jump on people and try and split push a little bit. But in this draft, I really like what they've done. Slardar, very good up against the Bristleback, even though Bristle came you know, afterwards. But Winter Wyvern against Tiny Wisp, kind of the natural pickup. Juggernaut can spin to win and try and TP himself away. And the Wind Ranger is going to be a lane dominator mid. I think MVP have a lot of aggressive potential and they do have this kind of timing thing. 
where Phoenix once Tiny gets the Aghanims up, they've got good chase power with Bristle Disruptor. Uh, the Nasal Goo plus the Glimpse to actually catch people and follow them and dive under these Tier 1, Tier 2 towers. But Trust have... S they've, they've got a ton of sustain, basically. They've got Healing Ward, they've got Winter Wyvern, Cold Embrace, and they've got ways to set up and disengage from team fights. It's just going to be down to these fifth picks, I think, that will either either tip the balance or make this into a very interesting Ten game. Seconds remaining. Yeah, and it, it also... That's good. I mean, it's, people like to exoticize the Korean Dota scene, but... Signature Trust, I mean, Trust is basically the only Thai Dota team I've ever heard of, and they have been for the longest time. So, you know, if, 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 if you want to root for the the small developing scene, at this point, I actually feel like Thai Dota is behind Korean Dota. Oh, yeah, for sure. But, um, hey. the, the one thing that stands out to me as, I don't know, it's not necessarily a weakness as much as it's a strength for MVP, is that the Juggernaut doesn't really have an easy target to solo Omni Slash except supports. It's usually a, a very positive sign for a Juggernaut when there's an enemy carry that you can kind of hunt down with your Omni Slash. I think that it's not going to be easy to do that against Tiny Bristleback or Invoker. It's not the end of the world, but and also with the with the amplified damage, that might be enough. I mean, it's it's not like the the Ten job of the Juggernaut is to run around trying to make solo kills, but when the Juggernaut can do that, it's a huge strength, obviously, Five because seconds. while you're Omni Slashing the enemy carry, they can't fight back. So if you've got this one spell that just eliminates them, Resign. obviously that's great. Not going to be the case today, though. That's very true. Now, MVP with that Invoker. I mean, we've we've seen Exalt Invoker a little bit here and there. Uh, the majority of the time nowadays, it's the 0-1-1 build, where you go for Alacrity at level 3 as quickly as you can to just try and Let's dominate and down. last hit on that lane. But with Quas Wex here, stopping Slardar, you know, Getting rid of this initiation tool out from Signature Trust with the Tornado EMP could be absolutely amazing, but... Hey, Trust, Witch Doctor, they've got two supports that are very good against the Tiny Relocate in with the Wisp. Witch Doctor offers you even more sustain, which I was kind of looking at them and thinking, hang on a sec, they've got a ton of healing here. I think this, uh, this mid lane is going to be where all of the action really happens. MVP, do they run the Tiny Wisp mid or safe lane? That's my question there. I... I think they run it safe lane. I suspect. I mean, you usually see solo rank warrior in the safe uh, in the safe lane. You usually see cure in the mid lane, but I don't know. I I just feel like. Hmm. Ten seconds. Actually, no. I'm changing my mind. I think maybe they run a mid. <laughs> I I think that uh, cures tiny at least might be the style of tiny that wants to run at the enemy early on and kill them. And actually, I think that's more likely to happen in the mid lane in this game than it is in the in the safe lane. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm a little bit torn on this. I'm a little bit torn. I'm not sure where they're going to be heading, but I have uh, the obligatory pause at the start of the game as we get ourselves ready and underway into this one. But this disruptor, it's a hero that we don't see a hell of a lot of. You know, usually it's kind of a reaction pick. Uh, outside of CIS teams who'd really like that glimpse play to try and you know, bring themselves into these team fights and just continue turning, you know, one kill into a secondary pick off and then into a third. But his laning prowess is pretty good. Against the Slardar, you've got that Thunderstrike to really zone out the Slardar. So I'm assuming it's going to be uh, with the solo jab Slardar off lane, my pro the mid-win ranger, then you run a defensive... Yeah, defensive try lane bot, but obviously the Winter Wyvern will be moving towards mid to try and get you that laning uh, kind of upgrade with the, uh, with the old Arctic Burn onto the Invoker. It's incredibly annoying. Yeah, Disruptor, you're right. It's not a hero that we see that often outside of particular teams. I do think that it's a hero we should uh, come to see more for MVP Phoenix. It it absolutely fits their style. I mean, part of the pick might be a block pick against the Wisp because they plan on getting it. Although, as we've discussed many times in the past, the Winter Wyvern is usually a better direct counter pick. But just the the play style of MVP Phoenix, where they exactly do like to go for what you're saying. With, and I mean, if you look at the Wisp Bristleback and Tiny, it makes it pretty clear that they want to get those fights where once they make one kill, they'll make all the kills because no one's getting away. And it's funny, actually, I've been casting the the Mars Dota TV Open Chinese Qualifier, and there was actually a team whose captain's nickname was MVP Dota Best Dota. And, like, they, they proceeded <laughs> to play, like, it, it's literally like a play style now. Oh, really? Which is, like, the kind of... I, I, I gotta say, like, it's... Basically what they do is they force the aggression early, and it's it's funny because it was just like MVP. Like, they had a mid player who died a few times at the start, like QO. <laughs> And then they just like kept being aggressive anyway, regardless, and eventually fought their way back into the game. And that's something that's always stood out to me from MVP and from a lot of other SEA teams, is the ability to just lose fights, but insist on getting back into the game by winning fights regardless. 
It's the uh, it's the Russian way as well. Vega Squadron love to do that. Like if if you if your first bout of aggression fails, you double down on aggression. Just go even more into that one. Uh, I like what you were saying though before about the bristleback though. That, that's something that kind of escaped my mind. You know the the old wisp bristleback combination that MVP have loved to run in the past. The fact that they've got that to fall back on. Is the tiny going to be the main partner here? That's that's what I'm looking at. Because if you run the aggressive dual end with wisp bristle. You can have disrupt a tiny top and have invoke a mid and just have strong dual lanes again. The battle begins. Yeah, I think you're right. So it, and it actually looks like that's probably what's happening here. And you look at what Trust are doing. And to Whisper's react back this. is Whisper's back is so difficult to deal with, whereas Solo Bristleback not actually that difficult to deal with. So I think this is gonna put pressure to at least send one of the supports to the safe lane. Sure Slaughter's meant to be an off laner, so it's fine if he has a difficult lane. But I think he's going to have a, an exceptionally difficult lane if he has to 1v2 and Yeah, sure enough, we, we do see the Winter Wyvern looking like it, it might head to that bot lane to start with. And what, this is going to be one of the rare games where mid lane starts as a 1v1 from the beginning of the game. Ah, oh, that's insane! Never seen this before in my life! Wind Ranger against Invoker 1v1. But you're right, this kind of status quo has been definitely upset with the dual lanes from MVP. Now, uh, let's slaughter. Gets in with the crush already, but let's just take a look across. So Juggernaut Witch Doctor's up at top. They've got the spin plus stun, but it's Tiny Disruptor. These guys have, you know, stuns to throw out themselves. They've got good ways of disengaging and stopping the aggression, I feel. Oh, Florev. He's hitting, getting hit by the Arctic Burn, but Febby's here with the crush onto him. Jab is actually going to go, go for this kill. He's got stick charges. One more hit, not enough. And Jab is still looking to dive under the tower, but he's got the stick charges, the heal up. And Febby, he's crushed. He's dead here. No real way of escaping as he got very aggressive while up at top lane. Disruptor dies to the Juggernaut. The Kells secures himself a kill up there. So this, this dual lane scenario for Signature Trust definitely working out a little bit better in the early stages. Yeah, it looked like it might be advantageous for MVP before the rotation. But now, now that both lanes are 2v2, it, it kind of does make sense to me that Signature Trust have stronger lanes. The Juggernaut is like kind of famous for being... Possibly the strongest, if not maybe Gyrocopter, poor at the early levels in a 2v2 situation. And yeah, the, the worst Bristleback, similar story, kind of needs some levels to get online. So on both sides, I think MVP are going to, maybe going to have to dial it back a bit. I mean, we're, we're not used to them doing that, but I don't think it's that easy for them to win either of these lanes with just straight up aggression. Uh, this, uh, this mid lane as well is going pretty decently for the Invoker, which I'm actually quite surprised at. The Wind Ranger's losing out on last hits. My pro is getting outlaned here by this Invoker who has gone for the Class Wax build. He's gone. It's a 1 1 build. It's pretty standard. He's got no Blades of Attack with the Null Talisman up. He's going to take a chunk of damage there, but Dubu, are you sure about this? The trade off's not going to be really favorable for you as a Cold Snap. He's thrown out. Meanwhile, down a bottom lane, though. Mikasa trying to get the kill of the Febby, but it's not enough. And now Forever's got the chase in there with Quill Sprays up in a little while. I'll just get the punches down. Yeah, and the interesting thing about the mid lane is Solo Ranked Warrior sort of keeping up with the Wind Ranger on CS, despite not going for that early value alacrity. Um, so it definitely does say something about the play, I think. Like, impressive by Solo Ranked Warrior to just be getting that many last hits. And actually, Wind Ranger's got no mana here, so I think that my pro needs to be careful coming forward here, because there's a tornado and a, a cold snap. I'm, I'm sure Invoker should not be winning this hard. Like, unless you go for the. Wex Exhort build with the Alacrity level 3, like I was saying before, is it, it should be difficult to lane against this Wind Ranger in a 1v1 vacuum, you know? Oh, Slardar does die at bottom lane, forever escapes with about 20 health. Okay, healed up by the Wish. Yeah, and if you look at, uh, look at Mikasa had four, four stacks, so you can kind of see what happened. It was a bit of a dive from the Signature Trust side, and I think that's actually a very good way for MVP to succeed in their aggression. If they sort of play the victim, get all those stacks off, and then suddenly turn around. Poor QO. This tiny is not having a good time at all. Eight last hits up on this top lane. And the aggressive dual lane is really piling on the pressure here onto MVP. And I think once this uh, this old invoker, he's got his phase boots very soon. He's got yeah, round boots plus blades of attack. Once he starts running around, we saw it from Sumail last night, actually, with the Quaswex invoker. Just dominating everywhere. He hit, like, level 8, level 9. He had face boots earn, and he just went around killing people. He was destroying every single lane. He just left the laning phase, said, you know what? I'm done with this. I'm done with your nonsense harassing me and trying to kill me. I'm going to go and kill the rest of your teammates. Now, up against this trust side, sure they've got a lot of regen, 
But if they get hit by that Tornado EMP Cold Snap, they are very squishy, right? Slardar, if he's got sprints on, there's the Witch Doctor Wyvern, who can't really last through it. And speaking of Wyvern escaping Mikasa, level 3, 180 HP, actually trying to get himself back into the jungle to hide. But MVP, they've got a tanky lineup. They've got a lot of damage over time, especially. But there's also the nuke power out from Invoker and Tiny that you really have to worry about. Yeah, it's... Uh, I mean, I think that the one big trump card for Signature Trust draft-wise is that they have the slaughter. I think that the amp damage solves so many of their problems. Um, you know, if Bristleback isn't tanky, if you can counteract, or if you can just burst down the Wisp quickly, suddenly the, the, the damage output from MVP is not that scary and you can fight into them. Because as we described early on, it's as the game unfolds, when we get to those team fights, which are usually so decisive in the current meta game, we're going to see a situation where if MVP starts ahead in a team fight, they're probably going to wipe the whole of Trust. So Trust needs to be able to take those fights, and I think that's going to have a lot to do with their slaughter in this game. Oh, this Wyvern. In mid lane, there's an attempt at the Invoker, but the Shackle does not latch. Yeah, Wyvern's just trying to find his place here, because he, he can't stay at bottom lane. You know, sure, he can maybe keep the slaughter alive, play that sort of Dyer's passive uh, role attack. where he turns around and Radiant plays uh, plays the old Arctic attack. Burn back onto these heroes, Radiant playing aggressive into the tier 1. But I think just leave the slaughter, sack him down here, push tier 1 up at top, try and get some early gold in your pocket. Well, this Disruptor is not available. Oh, wow. Tiny under the tower. Dropping down there. Oh, down yeah, the I got a Sebi. Oh, he's going to get himself hit by the tower. And now it looks like Forev might just dive this as a crush up for Jab. But Forev should have the movement speed and the damage to take him down Slaughter. Not going to hit by that cool spray. Radiant Maybe he's going to be fine. Actually, he has the movement speed with a sprint to get himself out of range. Yeah, so just barely making it out, despite not having any boots and Bristleback having treads, so very important Slytherin crash. But I gotta say, in a bizarre way, even though Kyo is like generally the star player for MVP, he is the most expendable player early on. We see it time and time again, like he very often gets early deaths in games where his team ends up just going ahead. And Well, mid lane solo ranked warrior is going one on one against Mypro, but Mypro has triggered, well, has got the win run. Didn't actually trigger it yet, just triggered the haste. And the haste, yeah. And that's going to chase. Meanwhile, you look in the dire jungle. Actually, we'll have a look at bot first. Jab is getting chased down here. He's used his crush already and forever will back up. But dire jungle, have a look at this for a second because QO is about to hit level six. He's going to get a ton of gold, but Mypro bottom lane back to here with the amp damage up to forever. They've got power shot. Is it going to be enough damage though? Because Forever is tanky with the stick charges. He turns back and look at this Wind Ranger drop. They don't really have enough to finish him off. And with four heroes down here, Trust are desperately with a power shot. Man, my pro gets the kill from downtown and they get the double as well with that kill on the Wisp. And that's very important, I think, because uh, other than the offlane Spirit Breaker, I feel like the Wisp Bristleback was actually MVP Phoenix's like strongest offlane at TI. It was March playing it back then, but. I, I feel like their strategy in those games was always, you know, Bristleback gets really big and actually Radiance makes space for the other two cores. Which is why, can I go back to the fact that, yeah, if we're balancing off Bristleback starting well versus Tiny starting poorly, it's probably okay. But if the Bristleback starts dying, starts getting pressured, that's Radiance actually a very positive sign for Signature Trust and a very negative one for MVP. Well, a denial on that bottom tier one. And I fully agree with you. I think this Bristleback has to get stacked. Take these Ancients out in a couple of minutes. And really start running around because uh, I think the Invoker can fight with him. It's more about the Tiny need, needing a little bit more time. So for the first 15-20 minutes, let's say, the Wisp Bristle back, they're going to be the ones that group up. They're, the, they're going to be the pairing, right? The Wisp Bristle. And then after 20-25 minutes, that's when the Tiny has... Does he have, a, does he have anything at all? He, he bought himself a bottle, actually. QO goes back for that one. But I was wondering, do you need a blink on this Tiny? Do you go straight into like the Treads Drums Aghanim Scepter? Do you go full carry? It, I think it's a difficult I mean, choice. He, he will go blink because he's QO. That would be my, my analysis. Like, I think the choice is difficult in terms of like the circumstances, but I, I really struggle to see QO being a tiny without a blink. You know, he wants to be able to see someone and just go on them. Although he's picked up the belt, so I guess he's going for the treads first either way. Well, we'll see where he heads. Uh, I think with the Witch Doctor Wyvern, you know, going for that blink, they are just easy, easy kills to go and pick up. You blink, you kill, Thank that's you. money in your pocket. Yeah. Get yourself a nice bit of cash for Evan Febby down at this bottom lane. Uh, not too much for this Wisp as we can switch over and see net worth now. Yeah, the, the Bristleback closing in on that 5k net worth, sitting about 4,600. While well, the Juggernaut, what's he up to? Phase Drums, 
We've seen a lot of Boots of Travel's Sanjin Yasha builds on this Juggernaut recently. A couple of people going back for the Mask of Madness, but it's mainly been Battle Fury Juggernaut. That's what you look for. And in this game, I don't know if they need it. They've got three cores who can all function as carry heroes, right? They've got Slardar, Wind Ranger, and Juggernaut. They all output physical damage, but also have some magical to throw into the mix as well. So I don't know if he has to go all out into that one roll, I am the carry kind of thing. He can just go for the, I'm going to tank up, I'm going to be the stats master. Get myself phase drums, S and Y, Scardy, something along those lines. Let's take a look at this disrupt, disrupt drop at the top. I'm waiting, biding his time, but there's nothing to do here as they will TP down to bottom lane after claiming the tier 1. A glimpse. Mikasa. Did you really do that, Dubu? Yeah, he cancelled the TP with a glimpse back. Now, Forever is going to be in a 1v1 against Jab. Even with the amplified damage up there, it looks like it should be okay for Forever just to turn back and force down his tier 1 a little bit more. I'm pretty sure when I was watching uh, the DreamHack coverage, because I was, I was starting for DreamHack, I'm pretty sure PPD said at some point that uh, it's not a phase drum is just not the build on Juggernaut anymore. So, <laughs> hopefully he's, uh, yeah, he's probably a bit preoccupied at the moment not watching this, but I, I, I wasn't too sure why. I think it's just because it's understood mostly that Juggernaut is at like big carry at these days, needs to get to that Battle Fury or Quick Mancer star. But I think you're actually right with your analysis in this game that uh, there isn't as much pressure. It's it's not like it's not clear that any of the heroes on MVP, for example, are gonna just like run away with the farm if yeah. Juggernaut doesn't have that fast battlefield. Yeah, because a lot of the time when we see Juggernaut now, he's kind of put into that Giant Phantom Lancer role out. where it's you know, he carries or nothing kind of thing. So you need that battle fury. Now we're looking at Lakel's actually getting stuck in the kinetic field. He could. Maybe find his way out of this one, but the chase is on. They kill off the slider down the bottom lane and a QO. He runs into that Witch Doctor, takes him out. And the kills, he's actually stuck in here with the spin up. I don't think he can escape, even with the Omni Slash back. The hits aren't going to be favorable for him. And with that final right click out from Febby, oh, pick up that kill. And they killed the Disruptor as well. And it looks like My Pro will just keep, keep himself at a good distance. But MVP Phoenix there. Three for one trade off. Definitely good for them. Now, can they convert this into anything else? Because tier 1 mid is pretty healthy. The tier 1 top, creep wave's nowhere near it. But it does get a lot of money for QO. Half of, half of a blink. And this is kind of just the thing that always happens, I feel like, when I watch this team. Very, I mean, sometimes QO starts with like lots and lots of kills in his lane. But very regularly, he gets a bit shut down. And then they just take the first couple of fights and all of a sudden, game on. Well, my pro has a lot of catching up to do, I feel. It's uh, it's 12 minutes in, and this is kind of where you want to be as a Wind Ranger. You know, phase, bottle, magic wand, and a point booster. But uh, he needs to be ahead, in my opinion. He needs to be actually going and being active. Maybe this is the period of the game where they start to do this, because Forever has put himself in a pretty awful position here. Even with the Wisp tethered back, they're not going to relocate him away, and they kill off the Slaughter. Lakels is now trying to get in there with some damage, but Forever's just being healed up. Febby came in at exactly the right time, and they can maybe turn a fight. Lakels, no Omni Slash, no spin, no health left, and no armor either. With a toss from Tiny, they catch him with this solo rank warrior on the Invoker, and he's got uh, Invoke back up in 10 seconds' time, but Forever's just tanking and cruising through everything. Takes down a bunch, with QO getting his hands on a double kill. And that was without your yeah. Disruptor. That was without your teamfight hero, right? That's just running at people. Exactly, if, if Disruptor's there, they get the fifth kill as well. And that's what we spoke about during the draft, that this is a draft that once the team fight starts, if they get the first kill and you need to run, you're all dead. So it's, it is scary for Signature Trust. They need to be in a position to run, you know, head, head on into the fight and take it. At the moment, I think with Omni Slash down, uh, no win to have an ult yet, it's difficult for them. And I think this actually goes back to the point you're making about the Wind Ranger. You said needs to be ahead. I agree, Wind Ranger needs to be ahead because the way that Wind Ranger keeps up in the mid game of fights usually is by making kills. This is not a hero, I mean, sometimes in PUBG you see Rush Maelstrom, but usually in a professional game it's the Rush, Aghanim, Scepter, and you need to actually convert that into kills to keep the farm up. You don't flash farm with the hero, but if you're if you're behind, if you get your Ags when they're already all prepared for you, you're not going to be making those kills, and then you are going to be dropping off. Yeah, I, I really think that Maelstrom was the way to go here, especially when you've... In, like, if you view this as the 1v1 it was, Wind Ranger against Invoker, the Wind Ranger has lost that lane. By by going even with the Invoker, you've lost that lane, because you should be crushing that. And obviously this comes down to the dual lane off lane that MVP ran with the Wisp Bristle, forcing the, the Wyvern to be there, getting killed off a couple of times, which also has this knock-on effect where she's just hit level 6, doesn't have mana for the Winter's Curse yet, so you can't contest Roshan. You can't stop MVP getting their hands on his Aegis, so they're just going to try and trade off farm as much as they can. 
up at the top. Get themselves, uh, get themselves ready up here. And actually, Cure hasn't gone for the, the blink just yet. He started the drum. I mean, that's it. Definitely, actually contributes more overall. I would say to have a drum when your whole team is kind of just diving together this early on in the game. And he does have the worst. Oh, the worst are actually going to pair up with Bristleback. Can't catch the Witch Doctor, and they cannot stop these TPs out. So Lakels plus Feymal will get themselves away from this pretty rough scenario. But Dubu. He's actually seen Jab here, we'll glimpse him back into the kinetic field, and with QO there, Avatos is all he needs to actually kill him off. And this Slaughter just never getting to his Blink Dagger, like, slowly trying to crawl his way there, but every time he gets closer, he goes down. And the Juggernaut, we spoke about, should he have gone for a quicker battle free? Now I'm starting to wonder, because, you know, if your player's gonna be to farm, and when they go for you, stun and TP out, then your farm needs to be giving you like a lot of value. You, I, th I think if you're not rushing that battle free and max that spin, you kind of need to be able to fight into the enemy team. It's something I've said over and over. But the problem I think right now is that they, they want to have the blink on their slaughter. Uh, I don't think that Trust want to force the fight until they have it, and I think MVP Phoenix know that. And it means they can just force down plenty of objectives in the meantime. And then you're looking at QO, who had an atrocious start to his laning phase. You know, he got killed off a couple of times. His, his tier 1 died very early on. And this Tiny, he's, he's come back really, really amazingly. 6k net worth, he's got Treads Drums now with the Aegis, and 1500, net, uh, 1500 gold in the bank on top of all of this. So I think he is going for what I was saying earlier, is just the kind of rush into the carry build. Oh, the Slardar's caught again. The Creeper's stolen. He won't die, but his farm is disrupted. That's the big thing. My pro's going to look for this invis at top, but QO takes it, bottles it up, and now he's on the hunt. The dust is out, and with this Fame Hour, which Doctor dead already, the Shackle will last, but my pro, you don't have the damage, and you don't have any reveal. Left, if QO can just walk this one off. Jab will try and get him over there with a crush. Maybe with the Winter's Curse, they can turn this back. They'll actually not land it just yet. Still waiting as this Wind Ranger trapped in that static storm. And the Wyvern didn't even get a chance. No Winter's Curse. Big, big deal there. Uh, yeah, and... Oh, Jab has is caught! Mesh. And the Crimson Curse. They just had Vision. This Invoker goes back in. Cancels TP with a Cold Snap. And he's picking it out. How the fuck did they see me in there? Like... I, I honestly don't know. Cold Snap happened before the Tornado so, did. This is kind of what I've been talking about, and this is kind of... The, the way the meta game works at the moment in, in most games, you have these few big skirmishes and fights that happen off the lane stage, and those usually decide the game, and MVP Phoenix, I think, take advantage of the fact that they know that this is what's happening, they're good at this playstyle, and they kind of take it to its, its limits with a Bristleback pickup. I mean, that mech, that Crimson Guard, we're not in a position where, I keep saying, Signature Trust can't run away. They're gonna keep getting caught if they run away. They need to fight head-on. But how do you fight head-on into the mech and the Crimson Guard? You you just can't. So, they're stuck. They're completely stuck, and... I gotta say, there isn't an easy solution for Signature Trust, even if they get that slot of Link, to come back out of this, because any fight that MVP's whole team is at, just seems like a fight that they almost automatically win right now. Forever now has a plate mail. <laughs> It's 17 minutes in, he has 27 armor, there's nobody going to be doing anything to him. And then if you want to look at solutions, the big one that is always brought up, right? You're being pressured, you're being pushed into tier 3s before, you know, pre-20 minutes. What do you do to stop this? Oh, you just split push, you know? You, you get heroes across the map, you spread thin across the lanes as much as you can, and you gain value and farm in places which they can't touch, or they, they can't get to quickly or efficiently. How do you split push against a Blink Tiny, against a Glimpse Disruptor, against a, a, a Tornado Invoker, and then the, the biggest thing is the bloody Wisp Relocate. How do you actually stop this? And the, the short answer is it's almost impossible. You, you are going to yeah, have no, difficulty split that. pushing. Like, you look at bot lane right now. Lakels is desperately trying, but he has no TP. He can spin, but he's going to get chased down here. Forever will take out the Healing Ward and just slow him down. Surely this will force him back. He's not going get, to uh, get killed off. But same with the Slada. His farm has been halted, and it took two heroes to do it. Yeah, and it's, uh, I want to say it's both dance, like both difficulty split pushing. Well, actually, Kyo's going to wrap around his smoke breaks. He knows there's someone here, and he's going to go for the blink. And yeah, find my pro. Static Storm is down. The heal is there onto my pro's Wind Ranger. And that's with the relocate, and looks like they'll take out that uh, Winter Wyvern, no problems. And on the back end, actually, Solar Rank Warrior shackled up. Lakel's looking for this kill. He's got level 2 Omni Slash, and he will kill that Invoker. But Febby can find the kill back onto that uh, nasty little Wind Ranger. Now Lakels, he's got the toss in one second's time. But that cask saving the life of the Juggernaut Q uh, QO. QO? I know you like to dive. 
But even with the Aegis, I don't think it's worth chasing the Juggernaut behind tier 3s. So yeah, the game is in such a dire state for Signature Trust right now that we... I, I think it's it's like a, a very positive sign that they managed to kill the Invoker there. Even though it, I... Yeah, I hardly think that that's like the player that's going to bring them back into the game. And yeah, just boarding up what you were saying before. That it's just Slaughter's got Blink now. But there's one question about can you split push and avoid dying? Well, Slaughter's not going to, he's going to die right now. But uh, there's a second question about even if you're avoiding dying, are you getting good value? And Juggernaut until now didn't have a battle for you. We spoke about the Wind Ranger. Sorry, excuse me. We, we spoke about the Wind Ranger that. Uh, didn't didn't go for the Maelstrom Bolt, so it doesn't really have that ability to split push really effectively. So it's like, it's very risky, and the reward Radiant's isn't even that big. Which again goes back to like you need to take these fights, but how do you win these fights? Well, they're gonna try and initiate on two on the top lane. There's no Omni Staff. He doesn't have Aegis anymore, and he will die here with the Shackle being good. Cask will help secure that. Winter Wyvern finds the kill, so they get the Mega Kill streak off of Tiny. Slow down his uh, progression a little bit there, and uh, oh, Dubu. He's hiding in the trees. Once again, he's in these positions where he's trying to stop TP, stop aggression. Radiant's bottom he's not tower in the, uh, the best of positions to save his time down uh, up on that top lane. So now Trust, they can actually push. They can push hard into tier 2 top. Maybe take it. He's still worrying about the relocating from this uh, whistle back though. Is the Wisp. Febby, good position. Very far back. And here we go. Relocate in. Dubu starts things off onto Lakels. And with the static storm field there, Juggernaut will get the kill initially, but Forever will just keep chasing and pounding into Lakels Juggernaut and finish him off. Meanwhile, over on the side, yeah, Witch Doctor. He's killed off as well. So with the relocate, they get the Juggernaut and the Witch Doctor. Only really losing that disruptor. And that's just revenge for them. You killed our tiny. We know we're ahead. We'll stop you pushing into the tier two. Yeah, it was a very well-timed gank from uh, Signature Trust to go for Cure right after the Aegis ran out, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like after the lane stage went well for the MVP, after Bristleback had such a good start, it just becomes an outdraft. And I don't know if Signature Trust are going to have enough opportunities this game where you know Cure or someone is just on their own exposed for them to come back into the game. I, I do, I really do, I mean, I've said it a few times, but I really do feel like when you're behind, the way to come back in the current meta is to win a few team fights, not 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 to make a few pickups. Like you can try with the split push, but unless you're getting a lot of value and never die, it's it's not likely to be what brings you in. <laughs> so I'm still kind of looking toward if there can be like a really big Winter's Curse to win a fight or a really big Shackle, something like that, to, to keep Signature Trust's hopes alive. You know when things are going really really badly in your game. And you, you just go, right, we've got nowhere safe on the map, we've got a good board up at top, you know, aggressively there. And a good ward now, just placed by the Witch Doctor over in this jungle. They were basically five men farming the jungle. Yeah, Mikasa's dead here. He's got the curse down onto Febby, the toss forward, though kill Slaughter. And now Mikasa dead, heal through with a mech, and Febby's not even gonna drop. They'll chase down the kills, he's got no spin, he's got no armor left. And with the tornado not able to catch the Wind Ranger, they'll only get that Juggernaut, except... There is Dubu here with a glimpse back. The Death Ward is good. Back on to Forever. Oh, clear up uh, at least the Disruptor, but I think this is just over. Signature Trust are getting run down. One by one by one by one. And, uh, they've got nothing left to give. A buyback on the Witch Doctor is available. But this is Tier 3. This is this maybe even Rax. Yeah, it's... Uh, I mean, I gotta go back to the draft every time. All the ingredients for successful MVP draft. They've got the tools that force you to fight, the tools that stop you from being able to run, and then the tools that, that get pretty much guarantee they win the fight. It all really comes down to the Bristleback getting so big, and Bristleback is the net worth leader by very, very far at the moment. If somehow he had been slowed down early on, maybe a different game, but after that start, it's just... I don't know. It, I don't know what you meant to do. The Shivas, even. Yeah, <laughs> it's insane. See, I... You know, like we said at the initial stages, MVP setup, Trust reacted, and Trust did well. But then MVP switched things up a second time, and Trust didn't switch things up a second time. So MVP, five, six minutes in, they got this foothold in the game where they were like, right, we have changed the pace. We're starting to set where these team fights are happening, where these skirmishes are occurring, where we're getting pickoffs. And even though you killed our Tiny twice, even though you killed off the Wisp a couple of times at bottom lane, the Bristleback's untouchable. He's 11, 1, and 9, and he's going to get himself a uh, Roshan kill here. I guess they give Aegis again to the Tiny. Because he's uh, nearly got his Aghanim Scepter. Oh, and Febby finishes the Lotus Orb. That's going to be fun to watch, actually. I think all five, yeah, all five heroes on Signature Trust have 
target spells spells that could reflect on themselves. So could see some nice, exciting Lotus Orb players still before this game ends. What's the what's the biggest one? Like Omni Omni Slash, I want to say is the most fun to watch, but Winter's Curse is probably the bigger one. Yeah, Winter's Curse. Some, I mean, it, depending on the position, the cast can really be damaging. True. The Shackle Shot maybe could as well, but it's yeah, it's probably the Winter's Curse. We'll see now. Oh, there's gonna be a fight. Pops, he blinks in. He gets the crush onto two and onto the Roshan as well. Over on the side of the Static Storm and Winter has got a kill on Disruptor already. But Tiny trying to get the Avalanche toss down. Four Rave is mad moding through this all though. An absolute beast. And it looks like this Invoker will just pop in with relocate forward. Very short distance there, but it just gets Forev into a better position. Not going to be able to get the kill as the spin TP does complete. But Juggernaut's the only one to survive through this. And MVP, they clear up Roshan, who took the Aegis. Tiny did. As he's got his Aghanims completed. Looks like this might secure the victory here for MVP Phoenix. Yeah, we've seen a few times this game, the one advantage Signature Trust have had is that Juggernaut can spin TP and no one can do anything about it, but, uh, you know, you, you've got to be all in on the farm if that's the only advantage you're going to be abusing. Out of interest, you know, I'm, I'm sure that a while back, at least in Dota 2, Tiny could actually cast Radiant's Juggernaut out of spin. He Which just couldn't target him with it. In, in Dota 2, you cannot toss a solo target, you need something to toss to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when but, he's BKB, when he's uh, magic. But, but he can do that, so if he's yes. spinning and there's something to toss him to, you can still toss him? Yes. And that, and that will cancel the, the TP. Yeah. Because that's that's how it used to be, I just wasn't sure if it still worked that way. That's, that's still how it is. I, I got confused the other... Oh, Q-O. Well. Where's your Aegis gone? It looks like there's going to be a, a amount of a defence here. My pro, he's in between a rock and a hard place. He's forever. He's going to get cast up, but he's got the Crimson Guard. Meanwhile, over on the side, Lakels spins, but he's just spinning to run. No real aggressive plays you can make with a basher up on this bristleback. A good blink stun here. Jab starts things off, initiates, but with the Lotus Orb onto Forev, there's no real chance. Alacrity on QO. Slap, slap, down you go, Juggernaut. Sit down. And my pro trying his damnedest to kill off QO, but he's just healed up and GG is cool. Feymau calls it. And looks like even with his uh, last ditch effort here from Trust, it's all over. Game number one goes the way of MVP Phoenix. But, uh,. And just like the, the Fnatic series I cast, I, I feel like MVP Phoenix look like they're literally a tier ahead in this game. They, this is like the MVP that surprised everyone in the top 8 that at the International this year. Because they, like, when they're on fire, they're just on fire. This is If I was Signature Trust, I would not know what to say in a team talk after this one. No, it's uh, an absolute rough one. But we'll head, uh, we'll head into a little break, wait for game number 2 here. Of course, these are two game series in the group stage, so... That's uh, that 2 0. If MVP get it, that's, that's a big win. Three points for them if it goes that way. But trust, they, uh, they need their points as well. We'll come back, have a look at the brackets and things like that in a second. But for now, myself, Durka, and Scant will have a short break while we wait for game number two. <laughs> 